This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and now the moment some of you have been waiting for. This is our full Surface Pro 3 review, the in-depth one, the hands-on one. We've spent several days with this, more than several days, putting it through all sorts of tests. This is Microsoft's latest full Windows tablet, 12-inch display this time, and as usual, a detachable keyboard. Viva la Cyan. We're going to look at it now. Well, you don't see a, a laptop laid, like, laid out like this very often, do you? That's what's different about this. This is Microsoft Surface Pro 3. It is a full Windows tablet with Intel Core CPUs inside and optional keyboard right here. So you can see it can function as a cover. Magnetic Eclipse on right there. And when it comes to the keyboards, because it's getting a little confusing now that we've gone through three generations of these, the first one was called the Surface type cover. Then there was the type cover too. And those work with both Surface and Surface Pro. This one is called the Surface Pro type cover because it only works with this Surface Pro model at this point. 12 inches rather than the smaller 10.6 inch of the previous Surface model. So difference in size is important to make sure you get the right one. And like I said, this one's not included. This is a $129 add-on, not in the box. So that's on top of the $999 for the Core i5 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD model that we have here, which is kind of the default model. There will be a Core i3 model and there will be Core i7 configurations as well. Those won't be available until August 31st of 2014. Core i3 starts at 799. That's with 64 gigs of SSD storage. That's really not a lot of room. It wouldn't be my top pick unless you're really, really constrained for cash. The Core i7 is get interesting because you can really trick them out and get up to 8 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. It won't be cheap, but you can do it. Now, there's also another Core i5 model available with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD, 1299. That's a pretty sweet model as well, especially because this, just like the other Surface Pros, this is not really something that's terribly easy to open for upgrades yourself. If you take a look around it, it is a pretty sealed looking unit here and so far Surface Pros have not been very serviceable devices so though it might have an MSATA SSD drive in here doesn't mean you're going to be getting in easily. RAM is soldered on board on this as well so you cannot upgrade it after the fact. Get it with the amount of RAM that you need. For those of you who have no idea how much RAM you need um, that probably means you'll be okay with 4 gigs because those of you who have been exceeding 4 gigs know you've been doing so. Windows 8.1 handles memory management pretty well and I can run Photoshop, Corel, Painter 13 and have Microsoft Word open at the same time and still not exceed my available RAM. Now, if you're going to be using Photoshop with this, and you certainly could, with say 10 RAW files that are 20 megs each, you might start getting into some memory paging and want to have that 8 gigs of RAM. If you're doing CAD work on this as well, gee, you might want more RAM, so you get the idea. While we are looking at the device, let's take a look at the device, so to speak, and on the side here, Again, it's beautiful looking, magnesium alloy, very modern. Microsoft went with a light finish color here this time. So is the Surface logo, uh, very simple on the back there. Ventilation holes all around the sides. And here we have our volume control. Got our headphone jack right there. And this is a little groove here to make it easier to pull out the kickstand. Up top we have our power button, nothing else going on there. Here we have the single USB 3.0 port, a mini display port for monitors up to better than HD resolution. And this is the charging port. Another little grip, so we got grips on both sides now if you want to open up your kickstand by grabbing it on the side. And this is what the charger looks like. Still very compact, and it's got two prong here for our US outlets. And this is the connector. Now they made it deeper, so this is actually the, the best connector yet on the surface. It's, it's, much easier to locate in there. It doesn't kind of weeble wobble and maybe you got it on, maybe you didn't. So definite improvement there. Obviously the bottom has a port connector and we'll whip, rip off our keyboard so you can see. But first, see the two point magnet approach here? There's the magnet along the very bottom edge that holds it in place and then there's a secondary strip over here. That's so when you're using it like a laptop, you can get a little angle on this so it feels more natural for typing. The one drawback is it, the trackpad right there. It's a little less responsive. It's not too bad here, but if this is not on an even surface, if you have this hanging off the tray table, say on an airplane, the trackpad really won't click anymore, so it does have to be firmly on. But anyway, to take it off, it's just magnetic. It's pretty darn firm. So you tear from the side. Nothing too different from what we've seen from surface before. And there's our 
magnetic connector right there. So that's how the keyboards attach. There's also a docking station that's available for this for $1.99 if you want that to use it on your desk. So let's take a look at the kickstand with the infinite positions. It's not quite, see, at this point it, it's a little floppy and loose because they figure you're not going to try to stand it almost completely perfectly upright. But when you move beyond that point, you feel the stiff resistance. And it's a good kind of stiff. That means that it's not going to actually close on you and wobble. And it goes as far as that. So no more two position kickstand. You can drop it as far back as this, which is a great position if you're doing artwork, even if you're taking notes. And of course, there's any number of other positions here. So it makes it feel more laptop-like. It makes it more lappable, especially with the new design of the keyboard that gives you that little bit of elevation and then a drop on the front. So good job there. Another big change to some people, to others probably not so much, it depends if you're an artist or not, more than anything else, is the pen. You still get the pen. There's still no silo for it because these full-size pens are just too thick for the thin bodies on these. And Microsoft has gotten this down to just a little over a third of an inch. Really thin, very manageable weight, 1.76 pounds or so. It's not an iPad Air, obviously, in terms of the weight, but boy, it's relatively speaking very light for a 12-inch tablet, right up there with the Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2. Anyway, the pen right here is Intrig technology. Same pen technology used on the Sony Vio Flip series. There have been some Asus models that have used this, even the HTC Flyer and Jetstream going way back in Android tablet land. And it's actually a pretty good pen. It's a metal body and trig pens usually are. And what looks like an eraser here, you know, you whack them, people are used to having maybe an eraser on the end, clicks like that, and it launches OneNote. So the idea of Microsoft had in mind, and they added Bluetooth to the pen, which makes it a little bit different from the other Intrig pens, which are otherwise compatible, but for this functionality, they figure it's just going to be like a ballpoint pen. You click it, and you're ready to start taking notes. So you can either take notes in OneNote, the Metro application, or if you want to download for free, OneNote, the desktop edition, you can do that. So there's a design there. This will not function as a eraser. We do have two buttons here. We can assign one to be a eraser, depending on the application you're using, and one, generally speaking, functions as a right-click. This is an active digital pen. It takes quadruple A battery inside. Intrig says it's good for up to two years so far. I use the pen a lot, and I do a lot of drawing, which is millions of strokes eventually. So I get about nine months or so out of my battery, which is still just plenty awesome. And we've got the little... I'm a pocket protector in a trendy kind of style right here, so you can clip it onto your shirt since you obviously can't stick it in the silo on the device. We'll get into the pen in detail a bit more later. Let's talk about the keyboard a little bit more because I know some of you are thinking of this versus the ThinkPad Yoga and we will have a smackdown between these two. The keyboard is much better than you would ever expect for something like this to be. And it's, this is more rigid than the last generation by the way too which is very nice. You'll still feel some spring when you type. These are movie clack, clacky keys and it's surprisingly good to use. Now, obviously, I spent a lot of time writing reviews, and it still would not be my first choice of something to type on. I would choose the Yoga keyboard any day, but I can actually type very well on this, so it's not a nightmare. And the trackpad's okay. It's a pretty decent size. It's a little slippier than I might like, but it's big enough to support multi-touch gestures. It gets the job done. For those of you who have the luxury of using this, say, at your desk and on the go and on the go, the tablet section is more important. Then it can be absolutely perfect because you can use a USB keyboard with this or a Bluetooth keyboard. Say something like this. This is actually, yeah, there's a lot of these out. Logitech makes ones like this. Samsung, obviously, this is a Samsung brand one that they made for a tablet PC of old that, that I still have, the Samsung Slate 7. These kind of keyboards, still not really big, so, you know, they're not a burden to carry around, but just perfect size for typing. So this is an option, like I said, for those of you who mostly want the tablet on the go and when you're at your desk, you can use an alternate keyboard. That's not to say this is horrible. I do suggest you go try one of these in the store if you never have before because it's a polarizing thing. Some people say, wow, this thing is really awesome. And other people say, I can't stand it. So I really suggest you try it. I think most people will be leaning toward that this is pretty darn good. And like I said, unless you're a writer like me, it's probably going to just meet your needs just fine. It's also available in several different colors. Obviously, cyan is kind of the, uh, the halo color for this product. It stands for the product. But there's purple. There's If you get one from Best Buy, they have their very own Best Buy blue one, which is kind of like a navy blue. So there's a couple of color choices out there for you. And then there's just plain old black for those of you who like to travel low-key. 
And as I said, we'll have a full smack dab down between the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga and the Microsoft Surface Pro 3. But just for those of you who want to see them side by side to get the, the, the idea of how size difference plays out. 12 inches, 12.5 inches, but obviously the whole convertible and laptop design, well, it changes things up a little bit. It's obviously going to be significantly bigger. Well, not hugely bigger, but a little bit bigger and definitely heavier. But you do get things like awesome keyboard too. Anyway, we'll smack those down later. So inside here, like I said, Core i5, this is full Windows 8.1 Pro because, well, Microsoft owns the operating system, so they can throw the Pro version at you, no extra charge, 64-bit. So anything you can do with an Ultrabook, a laptop, even a desktop, you can do with this guy. So we have the usual Metro UI right here. And notice how there's no bloatware here. I mean, these are things that I've put on. They, they gave you Microsoft Mahjong, and how can you resist Mahjong, right? Fresh Paint, which is a drawing program, and this is an installer for Office. Office is not included with Intel Core CPUs unless you actually pay for it. You don't get a free bundle like you do on the 8-inch Intel Atom Windows tablets. So pretty clean here, and the nice thing is on 128 gig SSD out of the box, I had about 96 gigs free, which is a lot more than most other Ultrabooks on the planet, which have something like 80 gigs free. I mean, there's always going to be a recovery partition here taking up some space, but then you also get all sorts of third-party stuff. Sometimes we call it blowware on there. And you've got the full Windows desktop experience here. Notice the display. Yeah, it is gorgeous. It's really nice. It is still glossy, so those of you who can't stand glare won't be too thrilled with that. But 2160 by 1440 resolution, 3 by 2 aspect ratio, a little different. Notice the Windows button is on the side instead of on the bottom over here. That's to give you a hint that this thing would be kind of usable, actually, in portrait mode. Something that uh, previous Surface with its normal widescreen thing was just not so usable. At. This, if you're looking at a web page or if you're reading a PDF, it, it's still, you know, kind of oblong here, but it, it feels more natural. But you don't get such hideous black bars when you're watching videos either on widescreen videos on top and bottom, so it's really not that bad. And yeah, I'm left-handed, so ha ha. Uh, I'm not going to probably ever bump into that. You're right-handed, you just might. But so far, the righties that I've tested this out with have not actually bumped into it too often, despite the fact that it's over here. And it's not a clicky button, it's a capacitive touch button. So it hasn't been a problem so far. You righties will have to tell me what you think who buy one of these. The good news about the display for you art types is the last surfaces, they might have had really nice looking displays that most people would enjoy looking at, but they didn't have super wide color gamut that matched the best laptop displays on the market. This one does. We move up to 95% of sRGB instead of something around 75%. So that's really good for those of us who need wide color representation and accuracy. And here we have 75% of Adobe RGB. Again, this matches the best displays on the market, including the Sony VAIO Flip 15. So good job there. Good color accuracy. Brightness and contrast, pretty good. Brightness after calibration, we measured it at 270 nits, which isn't wildly bright, and that's with auto brightness turned off. By the way, ours shipped with auto brightness turned off, which is different. A little unusual there. Um, contrast, very good. Black levels are pretty good on this. So a pleasing display, very sharp. By default, it ships with 150% scaling for the desktop, which I think is a pretty good fit. Icons are not humongous. They're not too teeny to see. Uh, at 2160 by 1440, I don't think most people are going to run this at 100% resolution. That comes with the usual caveats about high DPI displays and Windows programs that don't really support it well yet. So you might see some teeny menu items here and there. Uh, more and more programs are starting to support scaling. Even Adobe says they're going to start doing it with Photoshop and this whole cloud suite of applications. Right now, the tablet is completely silent. Granted, it's not doing a whole lot, but we are keeping it awake and opening some pictures once in a while. It is a very quiet tablet. Now, we're going to demo Civ 5 in a while, and you'll hear the fan coming on. It's actually not as loud as my Surface Pro 2, which really was just wishing right along. You'll still, still hear it this, but maybe the, the fact that it has a slightly larger body to work with for, with cooling and the redesigned cooling system in here, it's not vacuum cleaner allowed by any means. But yes, this is a 0.36 inch thin metal body device with a CPU RAM SSD not so far from the surface so if you're playing something like Civ 5 if you're crazy enough to try Battlefield 4 really this is like an ultrabook it's not meant for that there's no dedicated graphics this is Intel HD 4400 
integrated graphics in here, uh, you're going to feel some heat from the back. It's not going to fry your skin off or something like that, but it's going to get warm. And obviously none of the heat's going to be on your legs if you're using it with the keyboard or even just using it with the stand. So it doesn't concern me, the amount of heat here. Now when I'm doing something like Photoshop with this or, or painting or taking notes in OneNote, it does not get hot. The fan doesn't even come on. As you've no doubt guessed by now, the battery is sealed inside. You can't just release a latch and pop the battery out. This requires disassembly to get the battery out. Microsoft claims the lithium iron rechargeable battery in here is good for up to nine hours. And you know, manufacturers are optimistic. Microsoft is no exception there. I think it would be kind of hard to get nine hours out of this unless you can tolerate the brightness very low. Maybe turn off your wireless even all sorts of stuff like that. I'm seeing around six and a half hours or so, which isn't largely much different from Surface Pro 2, which actually after Microsoft's battery update did pretty well. It's decent. It, it's comparable to many other Ultrabooks on the market. It's certainly good for a full core tablet because, well, how much battery can you fit in something that they're trying to keep rather thin and rather light? So how about performance? It does really pretty well. The, the least exciting thing right here is the SSD score from the MSAT SSD. That's not, those are not bad numbers. They're just kind of average numbers. And average for an SSD is still very, very fast. And again, we have the 128 gig model here. For PC Mark 7, our Core i5-4300U, that's a 1.9 gigahertz dual core ULV Ultrabook CPU, scored 5,111. That is very good for a Core i5. So. But Surface Pro has always done very well. The, the clean OS in here, lack of bloatware, good tuning have always, well, meant pretty fast numbers. W Prime, it computed in Pi in 19.98 seconds, also very good. That primarily depends on the CPU. Geekbench 3, the 64-bit test, single core 2908, multi-core 5695. All good numbers, a good performer. So how about note-taking? We'll try out one note just to see. A little click of the pen, and here it is. It automatically knows once it senses the pen tip. To start going with that writing, and it keeps up very well. Not that pressure sensitivity is that important here, but you can see I'm drawing a light line. I'm drawing a heavier line. This, of course, uses the modern Windows Ink API. doesn't need WinTab or anything like that, but uh -huh, there is a WinTab driver you can download. Entrick has it on their site for things like Adobe Photoshop that still need WinTab. But anyway, this, Fresh Paint, Metro Apps, Autodesk, Sketchbook, they all use the modern Windows Ink API, so you don't have to care about that stuff. So anyway, yes, it is just fine for note-taking. And I think that Entrick, for those of you who just take notes, is really absolutely just fine. The only thing is that you have to get the pen tip a little bit closer so it detects the pen and knows to reject your palm. That is, so you can rest your hand on the glass compared to Wacom, which has a much larger hover distance. You can see the pen tip appearing. I know it's really teeny and disappearing. And I'm gee, maybe a centimeter away from the glass. So that's a pretty short distance. You're going to have to get used to waiting for that and then putting your hand on the glass. That's the only thing you might not like. But things like parallax, uh, where the tip is located versus where the pointer show up, tend to be much more accurate on entry right out to the edges. It's tracking me. It's very precise right there. So that's that's something that actually Entrig does better, so that, that's pretty nice. Now, even for art applications, Entrig isn't bad. We're going to look at art applications next. Here we are in ArtRage 4. Now, ArtRage supports both WinTab and Windows Ink API. By default, it turned on WinTab because I had st installed the 64-bit WinTab driver, and I found that the palm rejection was really lacking. I just really had to get close. I was getting vectoring between my knuckle, so I actually turned that off and let it go with the Windows Ink API, which it supports just fine. So you can get some pretty natural strokes. Now, I'm using too thick of a tool right now. So let's go and try to feather in the horse's mane a little bit and it keeps up just fine. So in terms of this kind of tracking, it's quite good. I'm not seeing a whole lot of jitter here. Now let's go back to something inky so it's easier to tell. It seems pretty good to me in terms of that, in terms of jitter, which means your, your straight lines turn all jiggy jaggy, wiggly waggly. Not happening here. Pressure sensitivity, yes, is light, there's heavy. It's what you would expect. Now, the, this supports 256 levels of pressure sensitivity versus 1024 on Wacom. And the folks at Entrig say it's all about how your pressure levels are calibrated. And they're working on doing even better calibration. Because I do have to say I found for painting that I like the Wacom experience better. Whether it's the calibration of pressure levels that they're doing or whether it's the absolute number of pressure levels. In the end, who knows, but 
it's not bad. I, I think most artists would enjoy this, particularly you manga types. And we're going to take a look at manga next, just so you can see that works. And here we have Manga Studio 5 going. And there's our light versus our heavy line. I'm using a thin drawing tool right now, so that works just fine. And for that style of illustration, I think Intrigue works pretty well because pressure sensitivity can be important, certainly, to comic style drawing, but it's not exactly the same thing as when you're trying to simulate an oil paint stroke or something like that. So if you want to have a little smiley guy here, there we go. Big heavy line. So yes, it works in Manga Studio 5 just fine as well. And we are running both Manga and Art Rage no problem there at the same time. Now here we have Microsoft Fresh Paint, which is a free Metro application. And when I first tested this out in our first look, the, the pressure curves were all screwed up. Now they're absolutely just fine. I'm painting on a virtual kind of parchmenty canvas surface, so it's supposed to be a little uneven, but heavy lines are heavy. I'm not having to press so hard as to distort the glass and cause light pooling or anything like that. I know some of you saw that and you were a little worried that, oh my goodness, the display light pools, but that's because I was pressing so darn hard. If you press really hard, you might get a little light pulling on this glass, but really not much to speak of. So that works just fine as well. And now we're in Photoshop CS6, which will work just like the CC edition. See how teeny the menu titles are here? Now the menus themselves are bigger, so don't have a total panic attack. And your little tools over here, well, they're kind of like really teeny, aren't they? But you can see what they are, so it's not the end of the world. But one day they'll, they'll join the modern age. Pretty soon they keep promising us, so well, there's that. Anyway, so we've got the pen tool selected and we're going to do some drawing here. And notice I am resting my hand on the glass and we're going to draw a very misshapen apple. But there it is. And I have pressure sensitivity. I'm pressing hard now for my really overpronounced shadows right there and drawing some lines on the apple. You get the idea. So yeah, you get pressure sensitivity. You get the whole nine yards right there. So good times for Photoshop and for Adobe applications because we have that WinTab driver. Now we're in Corel Painter 13. This has always been the hard one to get work working, even if you have the WinTab and Trig drivers, but the latest ones that are available on Entrig's website finally bring pressure sensitivity. And I can go to the brush, brush preferences right here, brush tracking, and you can see it's registering changing the pressure scale as I do this. Now I have a fairly light touch. I'm not a heavy handed person with the pen. So let's see how we do. If I do a light touch, it doesn't register. The, the pressure curves are not ideal, but they are obviously there. As I press harder, it gets fatter. I'm using charcoal tool right now, but it will miss. It's not ideal. See what I'm doing right here? Say I was trying to fill in the hair on somebody. It's not going to do it unless you have a pretty heavy stroke and then you get kind of fat lines on it. So I hope that they keep improving this with entry driver updates, maybe even another firmware tweak to change some of these things. But it's a start. This is the first time we've ever seen pressure sensitivity in Corel Painter 13 or X3 as it's also called. Now I had to uninstall and reinstall the driver a couple of times to get it to work, but you might have to do the same. You might not. And now it's fun time. But first, listen to those speakers. You know how Surface Pro always had like just okay speakers? This is 50% volume. This sounds really, really good. Civ 5, 2160 by 1440. We're running this at with the Gods and Thrones expansion pack on board. And we will use our two fingers scrolling here. Try and move my men. Works fine. Now this world I haven't had enough chance to play is not too revealed yet, but still it's playing absolutely just fine right here. And there's my guys, and I'll move them over here. This is pretty heavy on the CPU, more than on graphics, honestly, the turn-based strategy game. So that's what you're looking at here. Again, Intel HD 4400 integrated graphics on this, so it's not really for Crisis 3 at all. But for something like this, Left 4 Dead 2, Diablo 3, it's going to play just fine. And of course, this being a touch-friendly game, it's really fun, and you could even use the pen if you wanted, because they do say the pen is mightier than the sword if you want to play the game here, but I think touch is good. And now that we've been playing Civ with it plugged into electricity for best possible performance, you can hear the fan hissing a little bit, but it's really not bad at all. It's Honestly, it's not worse than the, the ThinkPad Yoga, for example. They're all going to blow their fans when you play Civ. 
So how about other features? It, this has dual band Wi-Fi 802.11ac. It's, it's a Marvel adapter inside Bluetooth 4.0, digital compass, no, no, GPS, sorry, you don't get that. You do get a 5 megapixel front camera and a 5 megapixel rear camera, which is a great improvement over the previous Surface where, Pro, where they thought that the camera was kind of really unimportant and they've focused more on the regular Surface for the camera. So 5 megapixels up front means things like video chat are actually really pretty darn good looking, which is nice. Of course, since this is Windows 8.1, you get things, and a high resolution display, you get things like the split window view right here, so you can resize two windows, any two windows that you want there, side by side, and you can use this in portrait mode. Now, this is kind of nice for those of you who are into ebook reading or reading PDFs. Uh, some applications look better than others. I will full screen it so you can see what it's like. So there you go, magazine presentation. Really pretty nice, pretty pleasant. So who is this for? Well, it's for anybody who's looking for a powerful tablet first, one that can act as an ultrabook in terms of performance, but is okay with, well, the, the type cover kind of keyboard, which is a decent keyboard. It's not a phenomenal keyboard. You professional writers out there probably will want something a little bit better, whether it's an external Bluetooth keyboard or it's an ultrabook instead. But other than that, anything you can do with an ultrabook, you can do with this. Obviously, it's very thin. It's very gorgeous. It's very well made. The, the, the high resolution display is stunning on this. Now, I've seen a lot of better than full HD displays, and this one is one of the nicer ones to look at, really. And, and Microsoft just handled rendering the display so nicely on this that I'd say it, it's worth it over full HD on the Surface Pro, too. It, is sometimes for artists, sometimes not. That depends on what art applications you need support from right now. That Wacom versus Intrig thing. In terms of the digital precision of the pen, it's good. In terms of palm rejection, like I said, you got to get your hand kind of close to that. For those of you who want to read books or comics on this, obviously portrait's not so bad. Also works great in landscape mode. Can play some games too. So it's a pretty versatile product. It is not a laptop in the end, but it comes surprisingly close. So that's the Microsoft Surface Pro 3. Again, it's available now, at least if you want the Core i5 versions, Core i3, Core i7, you have to wait until August 31st of 2014. And yes, it is Microsoft's best tablet yet in a short-lived line of tablets. Awesome display here. The best keyboard yet, too. And it could be a laptop to replacement, depending on what you need. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.